Previously on Photosynthio and Respirate. The photosynthesizers and respirationers are having another street brawl. Captain Davis, the chief of police, breaks it up and declares death for any one of the members of either family that disturbs the peace again. Meanwhile, Photosynthio is lovesick over a girl and Benvolio tries to cheer him up. Photosynthio explains how important this girl is to his light dependent and light independent processes of photosynthesis. Elsewhere, Paris, a friend of the prince, asks Mr. Respirationer for his daughter Respirate's hand in marriage. Mr. Respirationer is pleased with the offer but wants Paris to wait two years since Respirate is not quite old enough yet. Mr. Respirationer does, however, offer Paris to come to his family's ball to see if he can win Respirate's heart. Benvolio and Photosynthio hear word of a big Respirational ball that they're having that night and decide to sneak in. Photosynthio meets Respirate at the ball and they instantly fall madly in love with each other. Later that night, Photosynthio secretly meets up with Respirate at her home and she confesses her love for him and tells him why he is so important for her cellular respiration processes. But with all good things, trouble is usually nearby. Respirate's cousin Tybalt is enraged that Photosynthio and his friends crashed their Respiration's ball and would disrespect his family like that. Even worse, Photosynthio is trying to get with his closest cousin Respirate. Tybalt vows revenge. And that brings us into part two of Photosynthio and Respirate with anaerobic respiration. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join these two cellular processes in holy matrimony. Do you, Photosynthio, take this lovely cell energetic as your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold through aerobic and anaerobic respiration? To death, do you part? Oh yeah, I do. And do you, Respirate, take this great cell energetic as your lawfully wedded husband to have and to hold through aerobic and anaerobic respiration to death do you part i do i'm very pleased to announce mr and mrs photosynthesizer you may now rely upon each other's energy today tomorrow and forevermore the next day Benvolio and Mercutio run into Tybalt, Respirate's cousin. Tybalt is still enraged that Photosynthio and his friends attended the Respirationer's ball. Photosynthio doesn't want to fight because he and Tybalt are now related by marriage. He pleads for peace between the two. Mercutio is disgusted by Photosynthio's plea for peace and decides to fight Tybalt himself. Hey man, I really don't want to fight. I got some things I need to talk with you about. Man, I ain't trying to hear all of that. The only thing I'm talking with is this sword. Watch out, Photosynthio. I'm tired of hearing this mouth. I'm about to make quick work with this so-called Tibble. Man, you can't beat me. Uh, 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 oh, snap! Man, you stole me. Tibble, you're gonna pay for this. Don't worry. I'm about to lay you right next to your friend. Ah! Uh. Unless you want some of this sword too, I suggest you get out of here. Hey man, let's get out of here. It's Captain Davis that's already declared death for anybody who disturbs the peace again. Mm, mm, mm. I told you if I had to come back out here again, what I was going to do. You already know what time it is. So, who started it, who did it, and where they at? Captain Davis, I saw the whole thing. Tibble came around here talking crazy, and him and Mercutio got to fighting. Tibble killed Dango Mercutio, and him and Photosynthio got into it. Photosynthio killed Tibble and took off. Got doing shame, I tell you. Uh, you gotta die like a boy. Well, all right, it get real simple right now. Photosynthio didn't start it, but he added more fuel to the fire. And eye for an eye makes everybody blind. But I tell you what, I'm gonna do to help everybody see. Photosynthia will be sentenced to death. I told you all not to test me, and trust me, I'm a man of my word. Uh, can I still borrow that dollar? Respirette is told by her nurse that Photosynthia has killed Tybalt. Mr. Respirationer, affected by the recent news, plans for Respirette to marry Paris in three days. Desperate to be with her beloved Photosynthia again, Respirette goes to Friar Lawrence for advice. 
Friar Lawrence makes a potion for Respirate to drink that makes it seem like she can't produce ATP anymore and will appear dead. Oh, Friar Lawrence, I am so scared. What am I to do? I have to be with my beloved Photocynthio, but my dad wants me to marry Paris in three days. I just want to be with my Photocynthio and escape this ratchet, terrible place. Don't worry, I got you. With this special potion that I'm making for you, it's going to appear that your body is not producing ATP. This will lead everyone to believe that you are dead. Oh, really? What is it? I call it anaerobic respiration. How does it work? I'm glad you asked. First, our bodies take in glucose and oxygen and break it down through aerobic respiration to produce energy for our bodies. But what happens when our body is not taking in enough oxygen? This is where anaerobic respiration comes into play. So both aerobic and anaerobic respiration break down glucose in the process of glycosis. But anaerobic respiration occurs without oxygen. This means it doesn't go through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Anaerobic respiration goes through the process of lactic acid fermentation. Now, I know that sounds complicated, but I'm about to break it all the way down for you. The reactants for lactic acid fermentation are 2-ATP, pyruvic acid, and NADH, which produce the products lactic acid and 2-ATP. The lactic acid is what you feel when your muscles are burning. With my potion, your body will produce small amounts of ATP, which will make everyone think you have died. I'll send a message to my friend, Photocynthio, explaining our plan through my good friend, Friar John. In the message, it will tell Photocynthio to meet me and you at your gravesite, and then you two can be free to live far, far away from your families, feuding and fighting forever. It is in my best of hopes that this will ultimately put an end to their senseless violence against and towards one another and bring peace between your two families. Everything initially goes as planned. Respirette drinks the potion and her family thinks she is dead. They have a funeral for her, not knowing of her secret plan to flee Photo Respireville with her dear Photo Cynthia. Friar Lawrence attempts to send his message to Photo Cynthia through Friar John. The message never reaches Photo Cynthia and he only hears of Respirette's death. He decides to kill himself rather than live without her and buys a vial of poison from a local street pharmacist. Photocynthio rushes to Respirate's tomb and drinks the poison. Respirate awakes soon thereafter. Respirate sees her beloved Photocynthio's lifeless body and decides to take her own life by finishing the rest of the poison. She lets out her last words before she collapses and dies. I love you, my love of loves, Photocynthio. A funeral is held for Photocynthio and Respirette, honoring their young lives and breaking down the walls of hatred between the two feuding families in the process. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to bury and remember the special life of two special individuals. I'm speaking of none other than Photocynthio and Sister Respirette. Now you gotta ask yourself this evening, what are we doing here at such a time as this? What is the only thing that can bring people together when they hadn't talked for a long period of time? Well, we're here to analyze that. We have two individuals beefing, fighting over their own beliefs, idiosyncratics, or whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, it don't make sense because we lost two individuals that somebody loved. I wonder, can I get a witness in here? We lost two individuals that somebody raised. We lost two individuals that someone is gonna miss all over something stupid. Something that's not big, there's something that don't amount to anything, an idiosyncratic that go nowhere. 16 years. Y'all just gotta excuse me because it kinda bothered me, it hit kinda close to home. 16 years is not a long time. In fact, it's only 580 months to not like somebody. 16 years is only 832 weeks to curse somebody out. 16 years is only 
5,840 days to tell somebody to go to hell. I wonder if there's anybody in here that's ready to make a change in your life. Aren't you tired of having the battles between education and intoxication? Aren't you tired of having the battles in between despair and your next meal? Well, this is how you do it. If we need each other, let's all come together because 16 years is a long time for somebody, but not long enough for you. 16 years is enough time to forge a good relationship. I need you like a plant need water. I need you like a plant need oxygen. I need you to survive. I can't move without you. It don't become a school until we all get together. It don't become a, a forest until all the plants live in one place. It don't become a world. I gotta leave you. Don't be found guilty of living a meaningless life. Don't be found guilty of dying without knowing your friend. You know who I'm talking about. Now. Some people call him name, but I'll just tell you what he can do. He's a son to a dried up plant. He's water to an uncirculating situation. He's dirt and soil to keep us grounded in that which, which we should stand in. Say yes! Yes, he is! Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel and check us out at our website at fathersoninnovations.com. Once again, I'm Travis Spivey, signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey, and make sure y'all have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.